we always want to see if it's lining up with our human intelligence, with our institutional knowledge. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we look and say, you know, I think it's thinking the opposite way we might. Let's do a few more iterations. Let's bring in some more data. I really think we're going to see that there's less mystery to this, uh, this type of skill set than we may think there is right now. Hi everyone, it's Bob Crossan. I'm the Editorial Director for Endeavor Business Media. I'm joined today by Chris Rank. He is Collection Systems and Wet Weather Planning Leader for Black mm -hmm. & Beach. Thanks so much for being here oh, with us, you. Chris. Yeah, so you are using machine learning for some collection systems work. Could you talk a little bit about how you're using it and what have you learned since the start of this project? Yeah, so machine learning, it's, it's sometimes viewed as a little nebulous or this mysterious thing. Um, when we talk about the world of engineering, we're working with data, our machine learning is really uh, a bit of a fancier and newer way of doing statistics. Uh, in fact, uh, you know, recently Elon Musk, Musk tweeted something to that effect. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, lifted up a hat that said machine learning, said statistics under it. That's really the truth. You know, everything we do in engineering, in this practice, this area, has some kind of underpinning in physics, biology, or chemistry. We step away from that when we get into machine learning, but we're really just looking at relationships of data. Mm -hmm. And the more I've used it, the more I see it's not as mysterious as you might think. You start to see why the algorithms react the way they do. Mm -hmm. um, you start to see bits and pieces of how it picks up trends, how it sees relationships. And what I believe is gonna happen for us is we're gonna see this just become part of our regular workflow in engineering mm -hmm. that Things we've typically done, harder calculations for, we've laid out a design. We'll do an initial pass in ML, mm -hmm. and then we'll we'll engineer some things from there. I think it's going to make us a lot more efficient at everything we do. Yeah. So what were what were some of the attitudes? I mean, you talked you talked about this is going to become more commonplace. What were some of the attitudes at the outset of this, and has that changed over time? Um, yeah. So the project I'm presenting this afternoon um, with my local utility, Citizens Energy Group. They weren't really sure what we were going to get out of this, but it was a relatively low effort, relatively low risk to get started. Mm -hmm. And when we started collecting real data and we're seeing that our forecasts were lining up with what we were actually getting, we then started to see the confidence it's there. And it's not a perfect tool. It's a forecasting tool. It's meant to inform decisions. Mm -hmm. um, there's still variances, but we, we get a lot of accuracy out of it. And it's a good, quick and efficient tool that would have been very time consuming and very cost intensive to have done in a traditional engineering way. Yeah, well like when you're talking about data that ML is doing, you're talking about data sets that are just so large yeah. that human beings can't really process all of it, right? C correct, correct. And even though they're, they're larger than what we can do, like we always have some institutional knowledge or human intelligence. Yeah. So when we're checking our, our neural network or whatever our ML algorithm is, we always want to see if it's lining up with our human intelligence, with our institutional knowledge. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we look and say, you know, I think it's thinking the opposite way we might. Let's do a few more iterations. Let's bring in some more data and make sure this is representative. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, th what I really think we're going to see that there's less mystery to this, uh, this type of skill set than we may think there is right now. Yeah. So what, what most excites you about ML in this space moving forward? Are, are there some applications that you're really interested in seeing with this? Um, yeah, I think anything involving forecasting or trying to predict what's going to happen, trying to get decision making for operators, um, any kind of real-time control. We have processes for these that exist in our engineering practice today. Mm -hmm. The ML can get us there quicker and it can get us there cheaper. Mm -hmm. um, that's where it's really helpful, but I see this stretching into our general engineering practice, things we do initial calculations for, site design layouts, you know, where to, where to put all the infrastructure in a building mm -hmm. and pass your conflicts. I can see ML making that first pass mm -hmm. and then the engineer would come in and review that and edit, for, edit it from there versus starting from the beginning. Yeah, so kind of raising the floor a little bit. Yeah, that's right? a great way to say it, that's a great way to yeah. say it. Well, great. Thanks so much, Chris. I appreciate you oh, taking appreciate the time. You Thank you, Bob. And for everyone else who's watching, check out our video description below for some more web tech videos and some other things about machine learning and AI.